Breaking news tonight. After nearly five years as a captive of the Taliban, U.S. Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl is now free. With me, two of the friends of Sergeant Bo Bergdahl and his family, Stephanie O'Neill and Sue Martin. All right, Sue, Bo worked for you for two years. How do you feel now? I'm jubilant. I'm very excited. I'm extremely grateful for everybody involved. It's been a long road. And how did you find out he was coming home? <laughs> I was on my way to take my grandkids fishing, and I got a phone call that I might want to turn around and come back. Oh, <laughs> so he heard it on the news? <laughs> All right, Stephanie, I'm going to go to you. Uh, my daughter heard it on, on the news. Okay. Okay. Stephanie, let, let I, me ask you this. I, you, you watched, um, I'm sure, Bo's family with President Obama uh, a few hours ago. Um, what, do you know when he's coming home? Do you know when you're going to be able to see him? We don't. I don't think that's, an, that's known at this point. Um, but we're hopeful that it'll be in the next 30 days or so. Right, uh, because we know he's going to Germany and, and, uh, and then hopefully coming home. Have you spoken to the family, ladies? I have not spoken to them since the news broke today. All right, and, and what, what, is, what are you going to tell Bo when you see him? Either of you. Oh, I'm just, uh, I'm really grateful that he was strong enough to just... Um, hang in there any way he could and that he's coming home and and I think he needs to know that there's so much support available for him here in the valley and and uh, nationwide as well All and right. I'm gonna tell him that his parents thank you no no go ahead his, his parents, parents never wavered once in their support yeah his parents and never wavered once in their support, and they, o they always knew their son was coming home to them and it sounds like you as friends didn't waver either all Not right. a bit. All right, Stephanie and Sue, thanks so much for being with us. And with me now, former U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. and Fox News contributor John Bolton. Uh, okay, Bergdahl comes back, one for five. We give him five, uh, you know, Gitmo detainees, Taliban, high-end Taliban, as I understand it. Good deal? No, it's a bad deal. And I know people are happy that Bergdahl's being released. That's perfectly understandable. But the president has sent the Taliban an unmistakable signal that he will pay any price to get the United States out. And that's a signal that's bad for Taliban and al-Qaeda to hear and our adversaries around the world. And, and perhaps even worse, it is despicable for a president of the United States to grant moral equivalence to these terrorists in Gitmo compared to an American service member. The idea that there's any equivalence at all between a, an American soldier and a terrorist, I think is reprehensible. And yet that's what he's done by trading terrorists for, for a prisoner but of war. With all, uh, Ambassador, it's even worse because the idea that these guys are going to Qatar and Qatar's gonna make sure they never get out to attack us after they, we know that they've attacked us or been involved in attacks on us. We know that we jail them and they're, I'm sure they're not happy about that. So. You know, he's putting us in jeopardy, is he not? Well, he is. For example, the president tried to appeal to those who care about military POWs by saying we never leave a soldier on the battlefield. But what if the Taliban tomorrow kidnap a foreign service officer? kidnap an American civilian, a missionary, a business person in Afghanistan. Do we just forget about them because they're not members of the military? Of course not. But, but when you've put a price on an American like Sergeant Bergdahl, you've put price on all Americans and That's the right. Taliban know that. And, and basically teeing it up for Americans to be abducted by these exactly. terrorists. Look, look, if the Taliban had said, give us $100 million and we'll give you back Bergdahl, would we have done that? Of course of not. Of course. But they say, give us five terrorists and we do that is both uh, negotiating with terrorists and moral equivalence they're both bad mistakes by the president all right now um, the the idea that we release five for one was there ever a, a thought that we uh, or a rule that we'd have one or two release and make sure they didn't return to militancy well the, the idea that they're going to a third country uh, is is simply not a protection at all the, the Qataris will release them or they'll find a way to get out you can almost guarantee that but I think the real problem is that the the signal that the president's sending is he's just he wants out of Afghanistan as soon as he can and I think the Taliban 
Taliban know that, and, and even worse, the civilians in Afghanistan who have fought with us, who have tried to oppose the Taliban, women who want things like education, now recognize the United States under Barack Obama is scuttling out of that country. All right, and uh, I'm going to uh, shift for a moment. You, you heard what that whistleblower doctor said to me a few minutes ago, basically saying that the inspector general in the VA scandal actually was slanting reports in favor of the Veterans Administration. Well, I mean, that, to me, that's shocking. No one has ever said that before. No, that's the first I've heard it. I have to say, ha having been in government service in several different departments, uh, this is an extraordinarily serious charge that's being made here. I cannot underline that enough. And, and if it's true, it's just, I think, a part of a much larger uh, pattern of criminal activity that we've got here. We really are, as you've been saying earlier in the show, we need a Justice Department oh. investigation here, and we need it right now, before the records are destroyed. Well, and we know that records have been destroyed, and that was some of the whistleblowers. But anyway, um, now I want to play some sound from the President's speech at West Point. Take a listen. And I would betray my duty to you and to the country we love if I ever sent you into harm's way simply because I saw a problem somewhere in the world that needed to be fixed. Ambassador, isn't that what he did in Benghazi? Well, exactly. Look, the president's policy internationally is incoherent. And he used to talk about the responsibility to protect. Remember that? That lasted one time in the case of Benghazi when we were in the process of overthrowing Gaddafi. Uh, he put a red line on the use of chemical weapons by the Assad regime in Syria and ignored his own red line. Uh, and that really, at bottom, is the problem with the president. He doesn't care about foreign policy. He doesn't understand it. He doesn't pay attention. To it. That's why he's incoherent. It, it is incoherent because he talks out of both sides of his mouth. But let's take another uh, classic line from the president. America must always lead on the world stage. Does he really believe we li we're leading anything? Well, only in terms of his views of climate change and... and <laughs> cooking stoves in third world countries. I mean, this is the kind of rhetoric, particularly to graduating seniors at West Point, that must leave them wondering they, whether they've made a bad career choice in this administration. And when you think about it, Ambassador, I mean, actually saying that to these West Point cadets who are, who are about to devote their lives to the military, I mean, it's like he doesn't even know who his audience is. Well, I think he's his own audience. I think when he <laughs> says it, he thinks it happens, and he doesn't care what happens next. All right, then let's take a listen to the president's plan to combat terrorism. I am calling on Congress to support a new counterterrorism partnerships fund, which will allow us to train, build capacity, and facilitate partner countries on the front lines. Ambassador, how do you facilitate partner countries when you diss our allies and buckle from our enemies? Well, exactly, and he's going to fund that program by the money he's going to save in Afghanistan, which means you're giving up on the central front against terrorism to fund programs he hasn't even defined yet. Congress had no notice of this. I think it's more rhetoric. It's another way to cover his exit from Afghanistan. And, you know, when you talk about rhetoric, I mean, and, and cover, not telling Congress, I mean, he didn't tell Congress about the five uh, uh, detainees from Guantanamo. Guantanamo. He's supposed to, by law, tell them. No, this is this is part of the president's effort to get out of Guantanamo one way or another, too. Exactly. Which, remember, he said on his first day in office. Uh, I remember that, Ambassador. I guess he, you know, didn't quite tell the truth on that one either. Could be. Ambassador Bolton, it's always good to have you here Glad in the studio. Here. Thank you. And coming up, the latest on the Marines still jailed in a Mexico prison. And why his now-fired attorney told him to lie. His mother reacts next.